mice, employing cats, making instruments for humans? There's some serious cobbler fables meets golden book storytelling along with a healthy pinch of dubious 19th century factory practices in Shuffle and Swing, the upcoming joint by Bitewing Games, a veritable feast of boasting, building, and beguiling rondelles. Shuffle and Swing operates like layers of machinery, where one gear turns the next which, if supplied, produces output which in turn results in points. In the center of this hulking board sits your one mouse foreman pawn, that on your turn must move to another space, then you either place an available worker dice at its lowest level in an empty spot in that depot, or select a dice already there. In either case, the dice owner conscripts a feline laborer, a potentially renewable resource, then you perform the corresponding action at that dice's location. Then the dice increases in value and moves to the next available action clockwise in its zone. This is a game of threes. There are three zones corresponding to three instruments that through build, one of the three types of actions in the game, you can spend cats in three colors to place, build, and upgrade tiles, which not only propels the game toward the inevitable end game trigger of two of the three instruments being completed, complete a single section of an instrument triggers scoring in a different type of area majority contest for each of the many different types of instruments. In theory, Shuffle and Swing is a fairly simple game. You need to activate the build actions of the depots corresponding to the instruments and spend cats to build that instrument and hope you have the most contributed for better point scoring during each section completion and ultimately the end of the game. But what's absolutely wild is the series of steps involved necessary to complete what otherwise seems like it should be so simple. First off, can your foreman go to the depot you want to build at? Is there a dice you can use on one of the two build actions there? Is it yours? Because it feels pretty bad to select someone else's dice, which not only gives them a cat, but also increases the dice's value, ultimately knocking it out into a break room, which can be collected and used again, scoring the owner some boast points. But let's say after all that consideration, you still want to use their dice, or maybe it's your own dice there, so you decide to go ahead and take the action. But do you have the cats in supply to spend on the build? The cats only feed into the game as a byproduct of the dice being selected for the three different actions, and the instrument that you're trying to build on always requires either of the two colors of cats that are not found in the depot that you use to activate the build action for that instrument. So before you build, you might need to go collect cats by taking other actions, or maybe you already had cats and you spent them, which are now resting on your mat. So you can take a rest action, which frees up all the flumping felines in the row or column, but not both, unless you spend milk earned through boasting, corresponding to the pips on the dice used to take the action. So you gotta hope or manipulate dice in just the right way so that you can take a meaningful rest action. Whew. And now that you have cats through one way or another, you can build. Like finely made instruments, there's a sense of meticulous labor in this game's craft and play. Each action greatly depends on and weaves into the others in a rigid clockworkian structure, which is only the more dizzying, likely intentionally so, with the convoluted visual presentation on the board. It's both rhythmic and mesmerizing, though utterly uncompromising when it comes to your whims. This is a layered, tightly wound structure, though also fairly narrow. All of the design, all of the steps, there are really just four mini games across the actions. Well, maybe five. Your interaction with the center and corresponding rondelles, which both spits out cats and activates the three actions in the game. This also levels up the dice from the basic worker one through three to the senior worker two through four, which the pips impact the strength of actions and also designate when a worker goes on break, through which you climb the boasting ladders of the three instruments, which both plays into the endgame scoring and nets you three resources that can modify the three actions, such as letting you upgrade other players' build spots to impact area majority, the aforementioned milk to better exploit the sleeping cats, and cheese to bribe the inspector into skipping spaces, who brings us to the so far undiscussed third action inspection. An inspector at each instrument moves a number of spaces according to the selected dice, giving points to any build and upgrade tokens he comes across, incentivizing 
Legend players to build close to their existing builds to make a perfectly point-laden path for boss man to see your work, even when that's at odds with the instrument's scoring desires. This feels like the most tangential of the five interlocking systems, but is there to provide another avenue for points and disrupt otherwise optimal long-term play, which is absolutely necessary, though like everything in Shuffle and Swing, takes precision, planning, and a good bit of luck or elbow grease to get the board into a state to take advantage of the action. There's a duality to the game that's not always congruous. It's both dense and heady, but otherwise simplistic. I've had a pretty decent time with the game, but I can't help but feel like it's at odds with itself. It's both more rigid and meticulous than I'd want out of a breezy affair, but the actual results of your action are more superficial than I typically want out of a game with this much complexity. But nonetheless, it's strategic and engaging, and once you get in a good groove with it, it is fun, and it's only aided by the modularity that comes out of the enormous <laughs> instrument boards, which have their own workshops and scoring, creating new pressures and a welcome bit of madness. While it didn't cleanly hit with me, I do appreciate its originality and the meticulous craft involved. Those who like exploiting tight and sometimes rigidly interlocking clockworking systems or have an appreciation for this really unique aesthetic are going to want to check this out. And that's our review, but let me know, what are some of your favorite games where it is just a Rube Goldberg machine of this needs to go to that, which goes to that, which results in this, ultimately for some sort of simple affair using the most complex route to get there? Put it in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, thanks for supporting, thanks for being such an amazing community. You know that I've been Jack for the Cardboard. Harold.